Hello, my wood turning family, and welcome to another episode of The Naked Turner. Today, I'm going to be working on turning a bracelet. Um, a friend of mine had requested uh, a, an emer a medical emergency bracelet. They really don't like having the uh, cold metal bracelet that they have um, to notify uh, emergency responders of the fact that they have an allergy. So what I'm going to be doing is turning a uh, blank bangle bracelet um, out of white oak so that they can then in turn um, dye, uh, paint, color, and dye the image of the medical alert symbol onto this bracelet. So the first thing I did was I started out by cutting a series of nine segments and I am really enjoying doing things with nine segments. Um, there's a tremendous amount of strength in a nine segmented piece because every three lines up as a triangle inside of the circle. So if force is applied at one of the segments, it's transferring that force at a very strong angle through the piece to the other straight sides of that segment rather than applying that out to another joint. Um, if you look at the geometry of a nine segmented object you'll find the series of three threes creating the nines. So um, let me show you what this looks like. Here it is chucked up on my easy wood chuck with some large jaws and uh, essentially what I'm going to be doing to this is trying to create um, I did this, I did a drawing of this on SketchUp so that I could find out through the middle of this piece if I have a 3 8 inch thick piece of wood in here what my inside diameter is. I'm shooting for a 2.75 uh, 2.75 inch interior diameter which means I can take away uh, an eighth of an inch from each one of these internal points and I'll end up very close to that 2.75 inch same thing out here, I'll be removing about an eighth to three sixteenths from the outer edge to end up with about a uh, half inch down to maybe three eighths inch thickness on the finished bracelet. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the outer facets of this and turn it into a cylinder. Then I'll do the same thing on the inside. I'll put a little bit of shape on it and then I will part off a one inch section of this two and a quarter inch thick um, what do you call this, coopered or stave. Uh, it's actually a cooper. So I have a series of segments, nine segments, creating a coop or a cup. Um, and that is what I'm going to start out with. Don't forget the most important thing, which is safety. Um, you always want to have some safety gear on. And I personally prefer to wear a full face shield uh, just because I have had numerous items that have flown off the lathe or parts and pieces of those items that might have flown off the lathe and I really don't want to get hit in the face or head uh, with any small fragments that could be sharp so wear your safety gear alright let me turn on some additional lighting here and bring up my tool rest that looks real good Turning on. I'm going to be spinning this real fast up around 2400 RPM. And uh, let me just make sure you have a good view of this. Not really. Okay. So here we go. I'm cheering up the outer edge. Okay. 
outer edge is pretty true at this point. Now I will start working on <clears throat> hollowing out the inside. I'm going to change camera angle for that. Alright, so now I'll be starting my hollowing of the inside of that, or my truing up, I should say, of the inside here. Spinning my tool rest and moving my banjo in. Be nice and close and lowering it a little bit. All right. So. slow down around 380 rpm and I'm applying some sanding sealer and then I'll do some sanding on this and then what's going to happen with this is I'm going to give it to the young lady who's asked me to make this and she will do her painting on it staining or dyeing or painting or whatever I'm not sure if she's going to use paints or aniline dyes or Japan tints or what she's going to use on this but uh, probably some kind of a tint or dye to do her painting and then what I suggested she do is take it and seal it with um, epoxy We've got some really nice grain patterning in here and hopefully she will like this um, now that I have the sanding sealer on uh, what I'm going to do is take and sand this down. I'm not going to wet sand this with oil because I want the um, uh, I want the epoxy to not compete um, or be uh, have a hard time sticking to this. Uh, and if I use any oil to wet sand it, the epoxy may not want to stick very well. So I'm just going to dry sand this down a hair. I don't have to do much because it's just a real thin coat of sanding sealer. Sand this down a little bit, like so. And this is, I think that's a three, no, some 220. And now, I'm gonna go from, from the 220 to the 320. Do a tiny little bit of 320 sanding here. Same speed, down around three, uh, 380. And down around 380 sanding with a 320. Super smooth, feels really nice. And now I'll do another coat of sanding sealer. There we go. Let 
make that dry and then just knock the burrs down ever so slightly. Okay, that's pretty much dry. Knocking down the burrs or the nibs. Uh, what Mike Walt likes to call denibbing. And uh, that's basically what you're doing. All the little nibs that might have stood up from the moisture of the sanding sealer are now getting knocked down. So the, uh, the proud nib shall be knocked down. And a little bit right down in here. Alright, and there we go. So now what I'm going to do is part this off. Bring the lathe to a rest. And that's looking really nice. Okay. But now, bring my tool rest right up in here. And I'm going to use my my homemade, uh, which is made out of a piece of forged steel, homemade parting tool, an old knife. Come here, turn the speed up. There it is. Now what I'll Okay, so here I have a block of poplar that I'm going to turn into a jam chuck for this piece. Using my roughing gouge. in the round. here to square it up. caliper and set this for the inside like so okay so there it is so then what I'm going to do is turn this end down until this fits over there which I'm really close right now and I have a little bit of a taper on it so that I can jam it on and uh, hopefully create a little shoulder for it as well so that it'll stay square. So first thing I'm going to do is try to create that shoulder somewhere back to right about there. Or actually maybe to right about there. Okay. Checking. All right. I don't want to jam it on too hard because this is segmented and I don't want to explode my segments. Okay, so now what I'll do is bring my tool rest around this way and touch it to the face like so. Touch it a little more. Bring it in a little more. And now that's almost true. Ok, 
Okay, it's touching right there. There we go. All right, that's nice and true. Okay, so now I have it jam chucked on there. And what I'm gonna do is ease that edge and ease the interior edge ever so slightly using my bowl gouge here. So I'm coming in like this. Uh, let me change this camera just a Okay, so now I'm just very lightly, very light cuts because I just have this jam chucked on here. Okay, so I have it sanded up to 320. Now I'm going to be applying some more sanding sealer and then denibbing or knocking the grain down. So here it is, finished oak bangle. I'll just pop it off the jam chuck now and uh, take a few stills. All right, thank you turning family, mi familia, uh, tornado. I uh, want to thank you all for watching and here's the finished bangle. Like I said, I will take a few stills this is a little bit too small for me to put on. Uh, it's for a young lady, like I was saying, who has um, a medical emergency necessity for uh, something that she is allergic to. So she wanted to make sure she has a medical alert bracelet, which she will be doing the artwork on. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, turn safe and uh, think outside the box. Have fun. Enjoy. Until the next time. Uh, there's so much great content on YouTube. Uh, I hardly ever watch television anymore. Most of what I watch is YouTube, uh, other people making things, or uh, ways that might, um, different videos that might inspire me. Um, so I hope you're out there doing the same thing. I'm sure you are. Have a great one. Enjoy the weekend. And I'll uh, talk to you again soon.